everyone. I'm here today with Ed Tick, PhD, who is an internationally recognized transformational healer, psychotherapist, writer, educator, and poet. Hi, Ed. Thanks for being here. Hi, Bonnie. Thanks for having me. Well, you are the co-founder and director of Soldier's Heart, and of course, you've been working with veterans and other survivors and developing holistic, spiritually, and culturally based trauma healing for over 40 years. And you work internationally on the psycho-spiritual and cross-cultural healing of military war and violent trauma, and on holistic and spiritually based healing. And Ed, I know that you have led a healing and reconciliation journey to Vietnam for 16 years. You're about to go on the 17th one, and you're already looking ahead to the next one next year. Can you tell us a little bit about Vietnam itself? What the culture is like, what the people are like, and what some of the traditions are that you've found when you go there? Happy to. And I'm an enthusiast about Vietnam. I didn't know anything about it. When I began leading the journeys in 2000, and I've learned a great deal and have been initiated into their cultural and spiritual ways. And so I'm joyous to share it with you and with our community. Uh, Vietnam and the Vietnamese people and landscape and traditions are extraordinarily beautiful, loving, compassionate, friendly, welcoming. When we look for the human shadow, and we always must, it's actually kind of hard to find it there because the, the Vietnamese people are so extraordinarily welcoming to us as Americans and grateful that we're there. So the first thing I want people to know is whether you're a veteran, a peace activist, a spiritual seeker, a psychological worker, you will be welcomed, loved, honored in Vietnam. And the Vietnamese will be so glad you've come and interested in who you are and why you're there. Vietnamese culture, it's a very, very spiritual culture. It's a Buddhist culture. It's been for several thousand years. But Buddhism isn't the official religion. Buddhism, rather, is everybody's religion and way of life. It utterly permeates the culture and the people. Their other traditions include Confucianism, animism, and ancestor worship. All of these four together combine to create an extraordinarily rich, deep, spirituality in Vietnam that they quite willingly share with us. And for us as archetypal and depth therapists, the degree of symbolism that's available to us, the richness of their mythology, the degree to which they really live it, use it, dream it, believe it as a living spiritual reality and offer it to us is really extraordinary and transformative, not just for veterans and people who had other kinds of business in the past, but uh, for everyone who visits Vietnam. Yeah, that's so great. And, you know, I really love that you're focusing on the healing and reconciliation piece of this. Of course, your history with working with veterans really speaks for itself. You're the author of six books, but one of them is the award-winning War and the Soul. So you've committed so much of your life to this and, and dedicated so much of your own soul, really, to this. Let's talk yeah. a little bit about what happens at the in the in the daily activities while people are on the journey in Vietnam? Well, I will connect uh, this comment to our search for war and trauma healing ways. I began leading these trips in 2000 because I was looking for the deepest, most penetrating and potentially successful holistic practices for healing our veterans' PTSD. So one thing I will say is that what, what every traveler experiences is extraordinarily deep and remarkably quick and penetrating healing of PTSD. Some of our veterans who have suffered the PTSD symptoms for 35, 40, 45 years since the war really experience them disappearing and healing in the two or two and a half weeks that we're back in Vietnam. And everybody participates. So. One of the things we do is that, of course, we're focused on our veterans healing. And it's not just Vietnam veterans, but Iraq and Afghanistan and Special Forces veterans go as well because they want to experience the, the reconciliation process. Survivors, widows, children of veterans, peace activists, spiritual seekers all go and everybody participates in the healing activities. So we do visit the old sites where our veterans or their family members had people serving and fighting. But we also, we go deep into the Mekong Delta. We go deep into the countryside. We often go to places no white folks have ever been. 
And that's always extraordinarily exciting and revealing. And the Vietnamese are very happy that we show up. We visit the pagodas and nunneries, Buddhist monasteries, and we participate in Buddhist study and practice with them. We mix with the people in the cities and the country. I have quite extensive relations with Vietnamese institutions and professionals as well. So we meet at the War Remnants Museum in Saigon, which is their major museum on the war, and we have an all-day seminar there. When we get to Hanoi this time, which will be on Veterans Day weekend, we are going to have advanced seminars with the Vietnamese Institute of Psychology, an all-day conference with their School of Journalism, and an all-day reconciliation meeting with their veteran organizations and our group. And so, and we also do uh, significant charity and philanthropic projects over there to help them rebuild from the war. They don't have PTSD, but they still have significant physical damage and health concerns from the war wounds. So they help us heal our invisible wounds while we're helping them heal their remaining visible wounds and everybody benefits. And uh, the degree of friendship, love, understanding, forgiveness that awakens between us all is extraordinary. And I've never seen anything like it in the US, I'm sorry to say. Well, I'm really glad to hear that it's going on there. And I think also the people that choose to be part of this kind of a process are doing their own work to help heal the world. So even though we don't see that maybe in the US as much as we would like or at all, there's so many opportunities for each one of us to be able to do that work where it is happening. And of course, you're creating quite an amazing container for that. Talk about the group a little bit. What kinds of people do you find are usually interested in doing this sort of work? And how do they get along as a group, for example, as you, as you all travel together? Well, just like doing group work at home, we have to build a community. And it has to be based on deep trust, intimacy, hopefully love. <laughs> We fall in love with each other as we travel. Um, we become a small traveling tribe, and so everybody's dreams are important. People, of course, start to dream for each other about the journey, uh, so we do dream work as we travel. The Viet Vietnamese mythology and symbolism, and we are on sacred sites in Vietnam, so that awakens our deep unconscious and the, the things that surface through us or from the Vietnamese tradition to us are quite revealing and extraordinary. So we do deep work with that. So we do group work as we travel, dream work and process work. And we work with our veterans and uh, other survivors and process their material as we go. The groups are always mixed. So I can't tell you the numbers this time because we're still putting this group together, but it usually is about a third or half of veterans or veteran family members and survivors who want to complete transgenerational family healing work. And then therapists go who either have worked with veterans or want to learn more about spiritual and holistic healing of trauma. Spiritual seekers and pilgrims go because Vietnam, as we said, is a very spiritual place with many spiritual rivers flowing into their one great ocean. And so we were also, every one of us is on a spiritual journey and we are tracking and supporting each other's spiritual growth and evolution as we're there. And as I said, we, are, we interact very deeply with the Vietnamese people and we become intimate with them as well. And so some of our people come back sponsoring Vietnamese children, giving more philanthropy, deciding to go back in the future, becoming pen pals, with Vietnamese and really establishing enduring and loving life relationships. And so we become a traveling small community or tribe. We do count dream work and other depth psychological work to be of the essence as we travel. And so we're paying attention to that and processing it as we go. And then we're also expanding that circle to include the Vietnamese and practicing many many rituals as we travel some of our own making for our veterans or our group members and their healing 
and some participating in the Vietnamese rituals. They are, again, a highly ritualized society and gladly welcome us participating in their rituals and spontaneously join with us in our rituals. Amazing work, really, Ed. And I know that, I mean, obviously, as a depth-oriented psychotherapist yourself, and by the way, you are the author of one of your books called The Practice of Dream Healing, Bringing Ancient Greek Mysteries into Modern Medicine. So I know that you have talked a bit about the dream work. How do you find for yourself that that depth orientation, that depth psychological perspective is able to really affect and contain the group on a daily basis as you go about the work of ritual and travel and combining sort of this psycho-spiritual aspect of the journey with the day-to-day -day activities of traveling and meeting people? Well, travel can be stressful, as we all know, and it's getting more so in the modern world. And so just as anybody should, and we all try to learn this on our life journeys, we take everything that happens as part of the spiritual journey including you know, if a bus breaks down, or if we get stuck in a remote village, well, what a wonderful opportunity. Uh, the gods have decided to give us a flat tire right here and now. So who are we supposed to meet? Or what happened in, in this region? Or uh, whose home are we gonna be invited into? So the adventure is always unfolding. We do use uh, Joseph Campbell's work, of course, we are mapping our journeys and we are replicating the hero's journey. We're replicating the basic structure of pilgrimage that has been one of the main psycho-spiritual tools for transformation throughout history and in all cultures. And I work with the group, well, beginning now for months before, then through our journey and for several months afterwards, we continue. We, we meet by phone or teleconference and we share and process what's happening for everybody as we travel. So the simple answer is that we are on spiritual pilgrimage together and everything that happens becomes part of that pilgrimage, whether it's a big dream or a flat tire or anything in between. Wonderful, and of course, that's what I love so much about the depth psychological perspective as well. Everything becomes symbolic. Yes. And this trip, I think it's a remarkable opportunity for anybody who would also like to travel and maybe just doesn't have the courage or the feel like they have the resources to do it by themselves or on their own mm -hmm. and the opportunity to, to gather together with a group, a soulful group at that and be able to take part uh, in the healing work that is happening and to really participate and contribute their own soulful approach to, to the greater good is really an amazing opportunity. So I really commend you on the work that you're doing. I know that you also lead a group to Greece every year, which is a kind of a different thing. And hopefully we'll have a chance to talk about that on, on another occasion. But whether people are interested in the Vietnam trip, which starts this year on October 31st and runs through November 14th, or whether they are interested in the trip to Greece, I really encourage everybody to check out your website at soldiersheart.net. And we really invite you to learn more about Ed's work and uh, to reach out to him if you're interested because Ed, I've found you always to be very accessible and very available and really willing to do this work wholeheartedly. Thank you. Well, I love it. What a blessing some of us have that we can deeply love the work that we're doing Absolutely. And, and find great ways to share it with the world. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Ed. I've been talking with Ed Tick, who is an internationally recognized healer, psychotherapist, writer, educator, and poet. Wabin means peace in Vietnamese. Wabin. Thank you.